this early morning. We've got very high hopes of a pack of wild dogs coming back onto Londolozi. We've heard that they're just east of the boundary, and so we're going to try and get ourselves into that area, hoping to see them cross. We believe that this is the pack with the alpha female that's missing the top part of her lip, and that's also pregnant, and so we're hoping that they then come through and then we'll spend a bit of time on Londolozi because she's getting very near to giving birth now and how amazing would it be if we have another wild dog den on Londolozi for the third year in a row now. It is very early on for a wild dog to be giving birth and so it's pretty unusual and the chances of that litter surviving are probably quite slim but the fact of the matter is there could potentially be a wild dog den on Londolozi again this year. So Robbie's just managed to find the wild dogs. We're not too far away from where they are. But the thing about wild dogs is they cover such large distances at a pretty rapid rate. So we want to try and get across there as quickly as we can before they put too much more distance between us and them. As well as they're also there we go, Robbie's just saying hurry up and get across there because there's a huge herd of impala pretty close to where the wild dogs are so it's quite likely as soon as they get close enough they're probably going to launch an attack on those impala and we want to be there to watch the chase because that's a pretty impressive thing to see. So we've just got to the wild dogs now, they're in the distance. There's a herd of wildebeest busy chasing them off. So we're going to try and get a bit closer before the wild dogs are chased too far away from us. So the wildebeest chase the wild dogs into a thicket just here. We're trying to loop up ahead to see if they pop out on the other side. It's always a very active, fast-paced sighting when you're with wild dogs. You hardly have a moment to even stop because they're always moving. So they're going through a bit of a thick area now, but where they're going to pop out on the other side, there's a big clearing as close to our airstrip, and there's very often a lot of impala there. So as soon as they see some of the impala, I'm sure they're then going to take off after them. So after what we thought was going to be a pretty uneventful crossing of the airstrip up there and we had an amazing view, they spotted a herd of impala in the distance and absolute pandemonium broke out. And they then turned and didn't want to go into the thicket so some of the impala came running out here. And a couple of the wild dogs have managed to grab hold of it and they're feeding on it right here. I'm sure some of the other wild dogs are going to hear exactly what's going on and they'll come charging across. There were a couple of hyenas trailing the wild dogs, so I'm sure they're going to come in and possibly try and steal this kill. The wild dogs will then chase them off and that interaction between them is just phenomenal to see. So difficult to know where to look, you've got some wild dogs feeding this side, you've got wild dogs and hyenas chasing each other off that side. So it's just incredible to see how 
firstly efficient, but how much the wild dogs thrive in the chaos. So there's just so much going on here and I'm glad we actually managed to get across on time to stay with these wild dogs and see all of this unfold. It's not often you get to see it. I know it is brutal and pretty gruesome, but at least it's a quick and efficient death for the empire. So a few more of the wild dogs have just come running in now and through begging or making a very high-pitched squeal that actually induces some of the other wild dogs to regurgitate some food up. So it looks like the alpha female was a bit slow behind and didn't manage to get anything. So it doesn't look as though there's too much left now here. And the wild dogs are slowly moving off into the distance there. Some of them have still got pretty empty bellies, so if they do come across another opportunity to hunt, I'm sure they'll take that. Um, but these hyenas are going to stick hot on their tails because they know just how effective wild dogs are at hunting. And if there's an opportunity to cash in on a free meal, why not take it? So as it stands now, they've just come past the entrance to camp. The wild dogs are all to our left, about 80 meters away. There's another herd of impala. So the wild dogs have stopped, looks like they've seen him. I think they were both caught by surprise because the impala ran right past some of the wild dogs Wild dogs are pretty much just standing still in the distance there. And so I don't think they were successful this time round. Going. So that's incredible. We thought that they had missed and they'd lost the opportunity there. But one dog obviously had kept chasing and has managed to catch another impala slightly bigger than the last one. So all the wild dogs are feeding here. They're spread out around us. A couple of the hyenas, of course, have trailed them, hoping to try and scavenge something from this carcass. But they don't have the numbers that they did back there. So it's great. At least the wild dogs are going to have a full belly. Now we hope that they just settle down and spend the next few days here on Londolozi so that this female there can then give birth to some pups here again. So after finishing off the remnants of the carcass here, they're walking in the direction of a pan which is about 50, 60 meters away. The pregnant female is right in the middle there. You can imagine the much needed relief she's got because she must be very warm, hot, uncomfortable with a belly that's that swollen. And now by being in the water like that, that's going to cool them down. Doesn't look like any of them are having a drink, so they're rather just using the mud and this water here to cool off. It looks as though their missions for the morning are pretty much done. I'm sure they're going to settle down somewhere close by here. So we're going to leave them. We'll head back to camp and go and just digest the morning. So fresh out of camp and we've just found one of the evoker males. He's the one that was also feeding on that giraffe carcass pretty close to camp as well and he's been lurking in and around that area. It's been about a week since then. He's got a bit of a gash on his head here and that's caused his whole forehead to be very swollen. The wound is still open and hasn't healed there. And he's not looking as though he's in the greatest shape. He's lost quite a bit of weight, his belly's looking empty. But he's still in relatively good condition given that he's injured and he's been away from the Nkahuma Pride and his brothers for a, at least a week now. Just been lurking around here. He's been very slow when he has moved. He's lying right out in the sunshine. It's a very warm afternoon and having a mane like that's going to make him very warm. He's not panting excessively and he's not seeking out any shade. I mean, we are... 10 feet from him and we're in the shade yet he's chosen to lie there in the sun so that's a bit unusual but we'll keep a close eye on him over the next couple of weeks we know how resilient lions can be and so it's not down and out for him just yet 
I'm sure he'll bounce back from here. He just needs a good couple of feeds and I'm sure he'll be able to survive just fine.